Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Matt Shane. I'm a Canadian artist from the west coast of Canada. Um, but since 2004, I've lived in a bunch of different places, but mostly based in Montreal, in Quebec. My name is Jim Holyoke, and I'm based between British Columbia and Quebec in Canada. I studied at the University of Victoria in Victoria, BC for my undergrad, and then I did my MFA at Concordia University in Montreal. In addition to making art and exhibitions, uh, I play music. I'm a drummer. Um, I played in a band called Think About Life for about five years. And now I, I drum with my friend Jordan um, once every couple of weeks. I also love traveling. I love to, um, I love to walk around. I love to read and I love to draw outside. I, uh, like Matt, I also did my undergrad at the University of Victoria and my MFA at Concordia in Montreal. But I also studied uh, Chinese ink painting in Yangsuo, China with an uh, ink painter named Sun Lingxian. Mm. Funny you should ask, I was obsessed with skateboarding and snowboarding when I was younger. And it's been about 20 years since I've been very invested in it, but recently I've kind of returned to snowboarding. I returned to some of my earlier interest in studying paleontology and dinosaurs, and also comic books and Dungeons and Dragons, which were all their interests as a teenager that have returned lately. So Jim and I met in a Drawing 100 class on the first day um, at the University of Victoria in British Columbia. Uh, we, as I remember, we were both in a life drawing session, so there was a nude model um, in the middle of the room, and we were all drawing. I was very nervous because it was my first time doing that sort of activity. Uh, and I met Matt uh, in a Drawing 100 class, and he had a self-esteem project t-shirt, which was a punk emo band from Vancouver that I knew about. So I was like, you like self-esteem project? and I was wearing this band t-shirt. I was really into punk and hardcore music at the time. And uh, so we kind of, kind of connected over, over music and our shared interests. And, and then we got to chatting about music and uh, Matt invited me to go see a concert and uh, the rest is history. We've traveled all over the world together, lived together in many different cities, played in a band together and are really, really dear friends after all this time, 20 years later. When I was a kid, I used to draw a lot. I used to draw mostly ducks, and I also drew um, faraway landscapes, like tropical landscapes. I always wanted to go to the Caribbean. Um, so drawing was a way of kind of accessing places far away from me. Um, when I was a teenager, I wasn't, I stopped being interested in drawing and I became more interested in other stuff. I was, I was really into hockey for a while, but then towards the end of my high school years, I got back into drawing and painting. And at that point I realized I wanted to do a degree in art. Um, but it was, I was much more multidisciplinary at that point. I really, I love photography as well. Um, so I, I did a lot of traveling with Jim, and then um, eventually I started to take drawing a lot more seriously, drawing and painting both. Uh, and I can say that drawing has run like a thread through all of my work um, since, since I was a teenager. Um, I've always loved to draw. Ever since I was a kid, I love to talk and to communicate has always been an important drive for me. But because I have dyslexia, I had a really hard time learning to read and write. And drawing was one of the only things at school that I was any good at. So I was encouraged to do that, but I also enjoyed doing this. Um, and I always had stories attached to my drawings. I'd have a picture of a monster or something, and if someone asked me about it, I'd have an elaborate story to come along with it. I, I see drawing as something that is kind of primary. Um, it is definitely a part of my painting practice as well. As I'm constructing a landscape with paint, I, I start by drawing, either with pencil or, or I'll draw with paint. But the line is such a useful tool in structuring a composition. Uh, so I think drawing definitely runs through my, my painting practice. And in a way, it's connected to drumming for me. Um, drumming. If you look at it spatially, it's, it's a kind of um, structure building. And I, I think there is a kind of rhythmic sense to, to the way that I draw. Um, 
it is it is a kind of way of building a space sonically. Uh, drawing, uh, sorry, drumming is a way of building a space sonically, and drawing is a way of building a space in terms of line and visually. My artistic practice has always been based in drawing. Um, even when I've played with painting or ceramics, I always come back to drawing and sometimes I find that drawing is connective tissue between different kinds of disciplines and interests. Uh, some of my work is close to literature or to painting, especially ink, ink painting, but within all of that is a lot of connections to drawing. It's primarily drawing. I think our inspirations for what we make together in our partnership have to do with ecology, largely. Um, I think we make habitats together, and I think that we, we each bring our own interests to the table. I tend to be more focused on architecture, um, in architectural drawing, and Jim tends to be focused more on monsters and animals, creatures. And I think we bring these interests together, but I think we also talk to each other, uh, verbally and visually. I think that we uh, respond to each other's marks and we're, we're always kind of building this world together. Um, we have a loose plan at the beginning, but so much changes over the course of making these things. And oftentimes we're, we're making them as they're being exhibited as well. So it's all of the influence that's around us. Uh, we're, if we're in a new city, we're going out running, we're exploring the city. We're influenced by the place that we're in as well. But all of that kind of figures into this imaginary world that we're both constructing together. I studied Chinese ink painting and have ever since been working with Chinese brush and ink, um, which is very close to drawing because it's still line-based, paper-based, and predominantly grayscale. Uh, almost all my work is grayscale. Uh, I think of writing and drawing as more like uh, sibling art forms that are different but have a lot of similarities and a lot of interesting ways to connect to one another. So I make both book works and large scale uh, room size drawings and I think of them both as immersive practices or processes. So when you step into a gallery you, where, where the walls are wrapped in a drawing, you're physically immersed in this space. Meanwhile, if you're reading a story, uh, it's like a psychological immersion where you're lost in the suspended disbelief of a book. Even if you're sitting by yourself in your room, you could travel to a place far away. Yeah. So over the next six weeks of our time here at the MAC, Matt and I will be drawing in the museum uh, every night from at least 3 till 10 p.m. And for this drawing, our intention is to draw a, a beach uh, the edge of a mangrove forest where the, there is a shipwreck and a dinosaur uh, entwined together uh, in a state of decay on the beach. And their bodies will become uh, landscapes for other worlds, but also the organs will be falling out of the nodosaur and turning into other creatures. And worms will be bur bur burrowing through the ship, creating all of these passageways uh, in and out of it. There's a sketch for either of these uh, at about yay size already hung on the wall.